Hello and good afternoon and thank you for joining me today. Um, my name is Elizabeth Booker and I am the founder of Wealth From Little who, and I help women increase their income and their income streams and improve their relationship with money so that they can earn more, they can keep more and they can start building wealth. And today, today we're going to talk about how to increase your income, manage it and leverage your money right now, right now in this season that we're in with the crisis going on around us, you know, with COVID and everything. And so we're going to talk about that. So thank you all for joining me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking time out of your Saturday to be with me here. Um, so it's going to be super quick. Take, get your notes, you know, write it down and share your comments with me um, down below. Let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, or how I can help you. So um, let's start with how to increase your income, right? Um, well, now that we're in COVID, in this lockdown season, it is the best time to start looking at, you know, where you are right now and where you want to be, right? You know that deep down inside of you, you have some you have something in your, on your heart that you would like to be. You know you have a purpose. You know you have something that God has called you to be, something, someone that, um, that God has called you to be. You have goals. You have dreams. You have aspirations for yourself, for your family. And um, where you are now isn't where you, are, where you want to be. But right now that we're in this season, um, being at home is the perfect time for you to evaluate all that. Take some time out, take it some time out to look at your life, where you are and where you want to be. And in terms of your finances as well, and also all parts of your, your life, your relationships with people and relationships with God as well, your health, look at where you want to be and see how you can bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to be. So with regards to increasing your income, there are three ways that I'm going to share with you. One, it's going to be doing what you love, right? I know you hear it a lot, but today I'm going to reiterate it because when um, this coronavirus lockdown is over, opportunities to do what you love and earn for it will increase. So one of them is doing what you love. Two is also doing what you're already doing now. So if, it, if it's in a job or in a business. However, I will talk about this more. If you're in a business, you could do it now and just make it more efficient, right? Making what you're doing now more efficient. And if you're in a job, it's about making yourself more efficient and making yourself more indispensable because as, as we shift out of this lockdown season where, you know, so many people have been working from home for such a long time, employers are going to reevaluate how they run their businesses and so then they should and to make sure that it's run in the most efficient way. And so if you have a job, you need to make sure that you're positioning yourself for promotion, right? You're positioning yourself to be indispensable if that is where you want to remain. And the third way of increasing your income is by not losing any more, right? By not losing any more money than, than, you, already, than you already have, which includes um, ensuring that you have, you're eliminating your debt and you're spending consciously, right? So, those are definitely two ways that three the three ways to increase your income one doing what you love because the opportunity for that are going to right rise pretty much very quickly after your after this corona season so i'm going to share um i made some notes here in my book if you see me looking down that is what i'm looking at and i made some notes here about how we could do that, how exactly. So real examples of how we can actually start increasing our income post-corona, like, right? So we know that, well, the rise of the machines have been going on for a while, right? And we know that that is going to continue to increase. So definitely ensuring that, I, you know, so 
a lot of tasks are going to be outsourced to tech. And we can see that even with, even with, yeah, sorry, <laughs> even with um, this social distancing and everything, we can see even in the shops how, you know, we can actually see the possibility of where uh, more technology could be used to make um, our experience grocery shopping more less um, where we can reduce the our interaction with other people. So that kind of thing is going to go on a rise. So the rise of AI, right? But that also brings an added benefit. So we know robotics are going to come in and more robotics, but robots don't have emotional intelligence. So there will be opportunities for people who do what they love and those who actually love connecting with other humans, you know, and there will be opportunities for those kind of businesses to actually thrive, right? So if you thought of a business before and you wanted to interact more with people, even if it's going to be online or, be, or you're going to have taken into consideration social distancing, is, which is not going to end soon, um, that is definitely one way, you know, you can definitely make more money. Um, so opportunities for connection are going to increase. Then another thing that's going to happen is the fact that, you know, our, our society is going to start changing very quickly. We are already experiencing that. There's lots of changes that has happened in 2020 that, you know, so many changes in such a short time. And I think that we're going to continue seeing that kind of thing. And in this season, we know that millionaires are being made, right? We know that millionaires are being made in this season. And one thing that you see in every crisis is that money loves speed. So if you have an um, idea, and I speak to a lot of women who have wonderful ideas, but one thing that they want to do is wait three months or wait six months or wait one year, or even if it's subconsciously that they're saying these things, that used to be okay before, but now, when, as ideas are, are dissipated, everyone is thinking, when you have an idea, you run with it, then you can be a forerunner. And, you know, there are loads of businesses you, you, you can start now from your home. You don't really need a lot of capital to start it. So, but if you decide to take a step back and wait to think and overthink, you will be left behind. So, unfortunately, money does love speed. And if you're looking to increase your income and you have an idea, you need to take action. Stop thinking about it and literally start taking action, right? Um, the people, the, those who are taking the biggest action and the biggest, taking up the, the biggest responsibilities and handling the most risks will get the highest rewards. You know, that, that's literally how um, life is, right? Like those who take even investing if you take more risk then you will get more reward so that and so and and that is good that is definitely going to happen post corona so those are definitely two, two ways then um yeah so other ideas we know social distancing is not going to go away so if you have so therefore what's going to happen you know people are going to start going out more and they will want to go to places where they can have fun, but no one's going to be going to Thor Park anytime soon, right? Because there are so many people there, right? So, so therefore you're going to start looking at places that are maybe less popular, right? Until they become popular. So therefore, this is a great idea, a um, great time for you know, people who think, who are thinking of, who have ideas like, um, I would like to start, a, you know, a business doing this in this area, but there are not that many people in this area do, you know, maybe it's a tourism type of business or um, it's, a, it's a unique style type of business and you never thought that anybody would come because everyone wants to go to the popular places. Unpopular will become popular right? The unpopular will become popular. So therefore, definitely take advantage of that. The unpopular is going to become popular. So if you have something that you thought was an unpopular idea, run with it. Run with it. Because again, as I said, money loves speed. Um, a lot more things are going to become unstructured, right? It's going to be so much easier for us to make money as corona ends 
So it's really good. It's really bringing in like a new way of doing business. Old ways of doing businesses are going to suffer. But the new ways, like all of us here who are, you know, you're trying, you're thinking out of the box, you're trying to try new things. It's going to be like, literally, it's going to be great for every single one of us. And if you believe that it's going to be great for you, it definitely will be. So one other thing that is going to change is education, right? Education is definitely going to change. How it's been delivered is already changing, but post-corona is going to change so much more. How many people are going to school right now? Not many, but people are still learning, right? And if you're not learning, you're staying, you're going to be left behind. So definitely make sure that you're learning something new, right? Okay. Um, so people are still learning. Our kids are still learning. Um, parents are still learning. <clears throat> Everyone is at home, but we're still learning. So education is going to change. And in not just formal education, which I do believe is going to change, in where you know people spend huge amounts of money to you know just to get a degree where they don't even you know start making good money in that degree is definitely going to change but people are going to start learning about what they love and they're also going to start learning about things that they are interested in as well not just things that they love but things that they're interested in i bet so many of you have learned new skills while you are at home and maybe not just you but your friends right i know people who thought they would never bake but now they're baking right so personalities are also changing um ceos who maybe never spent time with their families are sitting at home having meetings in their pajamas right um maybe high-flying women who had nannies and cooks and chauffeurs probably are now cleaning their own bathrooms right um people's personalities, people's perceptions of who they are, are changing, right? So, you know, youth, I used to think that, oh, I definitely need my kids in school at least three days a week because I need time to myself. And it's true. But this season has, told, has taught us that we are more res resilient than we actually think we are. And we have so much more skills within us than we've actually given ourselves credit for. So in terms of learning new things and education you of you are all examples of that you have been learning new things about yourself you've been learning new skills and that is going to continue so if you have an idea you want to teach something right even if it's teaching how to how to make badges for example i'm giving that as because this is right is, i have a badge on my table even if it's teaching how to make badges people are going to make money from that and another thing that's happening is that Facebook is going to start allowing people to, um, allowing people to, what's the word? To charge for live streams, right? People, um, Facebook is going to start allowing people to charge for live streaming, which means that, um, which means that the people can start earning money, literally. Any one of us who has a Facebook account can become a business owner. You can stay in your house and decide that you're a singer and you want people to pay any amount of money to come and listen to you sing, right? And you can literally start earning money sitting down in your bedroom, on your, in your PJs, singing and earning money that way. So those are just some of the changes that are coming and they're going to be the opportunity to make money is immense and if you focus on if you know obviously we are talking about finances here hence the reason why i'm talking about that right so um if you focus on the negativity which is oh people are dying and all that all that negative which is sad um then like literally you get more of what you focus on right but if you keep looking out for opportunities for how you can increase your investments how you can um, leverage your income, how you can increase your income, um, you will find that the opportunities are like a mess. I have about 30 here, but I'm going to um, stop now. And maybe I will like, I will create another video with all the examples I have. So yeah, so those are just examples of doing what you love. And let me know in the comments if like this resonated with you at all. 
So doing what you love, will you can definitely increase your income, right? And examples of people who have done that and made millions are immersed. I know someone who makes, um, who earns like five, um, five figure months just making cake um, decorations, just um, like cake toppers and so many examples, right? That I can give you. Um, then, you know, as I explained, also doing what you're already doing and also by not losing any more money, right? So that means like conscious spending, right? Right now, a lot of people spend in accordance with what other people tell them to spend. <clears throat> Buyer psychology and advertising and credit cards and governments and, you know, all work together to ensure that, you know, the economy is boosted. The economy um, starts to improve when people are buying right? When people are buying, when people are spending. So therefore, you know, if you are not paying attention to what you are spending on, when the lockdown ends, opportunity for you to spend will increase, right? That will mean that literally you can be, and that happened in China, right? Um, the lockdown closed and Louis Vuitton had like their best sales ever, right? Everyone went to shop, Right. And what's that? Retail therapy. It's, uh, you know, we've been locked down. We survived the corona. So therefore, it, we, we, it's, it, we deserve to treat ourselves. Right. And, you know, companies are going to take advantage of that mindset to ensure that we are spending more money, spending more money on sugar, spending more money on carbs, spending more money on treats, on things for our kids, on things for ourselves, on beauty treatments, on but we've seen through this lockdown that we can live without all those things. But, you know, if we're not allowing ourselves to think for ourselves and we're allowing companies and governments and, you know, advertisements to think for us, then we may get lost and be put in that equation of people who are going to be losing money after the lockdown. On the flip side, those who are starting businesses are going to be making the money. And that's us, right? So if you are, if you are um, starting businesses, you're going to be making money. If you, right now, government is supporting, um, government is supporting employees, yeah? And helping in paying their, their, their um, income, which is great. But when this is all over, what's going to happen, like most likely taxes are going to go up. So the same people who got paid all this money out, government's going to take it all back, right? And those that are going to save the economy are those who are bringing, allowing people to buy and, you know, as buying and selling increases, then um, those, you know, then the economy, economy will start increasing as well. And that obviously, it doesn't happen overnight, but, you know, these kind of things are what is going to ensure, depending on which side of the table you are, um, someone made a comment, I think it was Les Brown, who said, um, life is like a grindstone and um, whether you have prosperity or you are, have poverty, it just depends on which side you are on, right? <laughs> and it kind of is like true because depending on which side of the equation you are, if you're the buyer or you're the consumer or you're the seller, one is either making the money and one is, you know, giving, is giving the money away, right? And um, so those are just a few things on, you know, increasing your income, which is what you need to do first, right? Then in terms of managing it, understanding yourself, understanding your values. Why are you spending the way you spend, right? So we know we have to live with below our means and invest more, right? You spend less, you save more, and you invest more. But most people, well, most of us can't save enough because you know we're spending and we don't really know why we're actually spending the way we spend. So <clears throat> just to help you, if you spend most of your money on ice cream, then you are saying to yourself, I value ice cream. And if you don't spend enough on your health, then you are saying, I value ice cream more than I value my health. This is a great equation and it's a great way to like, in a very simple way to try and help you understand where your values lie. If you're spending more on your, um, 
on anything than something else. If you are spending more on improving yourself, investing in yourself and showing that in terms of not just money, but also your time in ensuring that you become the best version of yourself, then you are saying that you value yourself, right? You value the time you're spending on improving yourself. You value, so whatever you value is going to be reflected in where, how you're spending your money and your time. So take a look at that. Where are you spending most of your money? Where are you spending most of your time? And have a look. Does it actually line up with what you want to value? Or is it lining up with what maybe somebody else has told you to value, right? Um, so, and as you do that, definitely don't, don't let self-judgment come near you in any way. So sometimes people do this exercise and then they find out that they spend a lot of money on maybe shopping or they spend a lot of money on eating out and they don't pay off their, they, they're still paying minimums on their debt. And they realize that actually they value eating out more than being debt free, right? Then they feel very bad and they feel like sad thinking that they're not smart enough. They're not good enough. That, that's all like lies from the devil. So like literally sh stop that and shut that because self-judgment is literally like pulling the handbrake on your progress. When you have self-judgment going on in your head, it, it stops you from being creative, from having a vision for your future and from actually <clears throat> taking action on that vision. So sometimes, you know, people think, oh yeah, I need to beat myself up so that, you know, I can now be better. It's a lie. If you beat yourself up, you are literally just going to remain stuck in a hole that is even worse than the debt that you had in the first place, if you have debt, if that's it. So definitely avoid self-judgment, right? And avoid like confusion and every, those kind of, those kind of things, those things that hold you back and keep you stuck, right? And if you need help, one thing that we, <clears throat> we need to do post-corona is if you need help in anything, you need to seek the help. You can't afford to remain, you know, you can't afford to remain stuck, like cycling over and over. What do I do? How should I do it? When should I start? Like, it's not going to work anymore. And if you do that, you will be left behind. Like the world is, has what, 8 billion people, right? And they say 5% of the wealth, no, like 95% of the wealth is handled <clears throat> in five, with 5% 5 of the population. And there's no reason why we all cannot be part of that 5%, right? Because when Christians, when, <clears throat> excuse me, when children of God have um, financial resources, we are able to make things shift for the kingdom. And God is calling us to proper stewardship of his, 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 of his resources, right? So that is, um, so things that will stop us in terms of increasing and managing our money are our ego, right? Like, I think I'll just stop there. You know, self-sabotage, the need for perfectionism, like that will halt you before you even start. You know, if you think you need to be perfect because what you who you are right now is just not good you need to start and god blesses things as you start right um not understanding what your true values are that would lead to some kind of confusion which will lead to you stopping then shiny object syndrome like i am guilty of shiny object syndrome like literally um i'll say i want to start learning this something new and then Five minutes later, I'm onto something new. And five minutes later, I'm onto something new. And it's crazy. Like, I just keep like popcorning from in, on, in different ideas. And what it's like is like building trees, right? You are trying to build trees, but you're building them on very shallow, um, in shallow soil, right? So you have 10 different trees that you've built and they're all in shallow soil. But what we really need to do is build one tree. And instead of going wide, like learning 10 different things about 10 different things and just doing the first lesson and moving on to the next thing, we need to stop and get focused and go deep. So you, you're learning one thing and instead of going wide and picking up, oh, I'll, I'll do that today. Oh, maybe no, no, I'll do something else tomorrow. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 it's good. I'm still learning. And you're deceiving yourself, oh yeah, I'm still learning. But you need to stop and go deep, like actually 
look at um, going deep in that one thing that you're learning and go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then you're creating deep roots in whatever you're learning. It's like, if you're, for example, if you're studying the Bible, right, and you're studying a book, just study it and go deep into that as opposed to saying, oh, I'm, I'm learning more about God. So I'm, going to, I'm reading this book and I'm going to read um, this other author mentioned something. Oh, let's watch this video on YouTube about this. Oh, yeah, let me watch this. Yeah, all that you know, is going to lead to confusion. And for you to actually become, to gain mastery in what you are called to do, you need to go deep. So that's something else that is going to stop, stop us, you know, this shiny object syndrome, which our brains love. And, you know, so last point that I'm going to share, and I know I'm talking pretty quickly. I know you all have things to do today with kids and all that. So that's why I'm making it super short, but do share with me if you have any questions and we can always answer them later, um, is, you know, how to leverage, leverage your money, right? So, you're going to start taking action. You have ideas. You're going to start making money, right? As you're making money, you're going to, obviously you're going to pay your tithes. You're going to take a portion of it to pay yourself, right? Maybe 10%, maybe 5%, maybe 20%, whatever. And then you're going to reinvest the rest into your idea, into yourself, right? Even if your idea is to build yourself up, right? And that's how you continue to leverage it. Um, ways of leveraging, and you can, then there are ways of, you know, investing your money so that it grows in different ways. Um, so many in my mind, and time is short to even go into all of them in detail from investing in the stock market, depending on your position where you are right now. For some people, it will be a great idea. For some people, it's not. Um, investing in real estate will be great for some people. And for some people, it's not. Investing in you know, businesses will be great for some people as well. I believe it will be great for every single one of us because I think I've explained that you can literally start any kind of business like right now from your smartphone. You really don't need anything else. Um, at, but before I go, I want to talk about the cost of inaction. So most people think that, and I'll share my first three costs. So the cost of inaction of doing nothing is not only the money that you are not making. So if you have a dream in your mind, you imagine that you could be earning and you should all have like income goals, right? If you have an income goal, because you have to be aiming at something. If you aim at nothing, you'll get nothing, right? So you have an income goal and you know you want to be earning a certain amount a month. Right now you are maybe 2,000 pounds lower or 5,000 pounds lower than where you want to be. That difference is the money you are not making because if you have a desire to do something, you have the capability, right? And you've seen people who have done this before. You know that it's possible. So that difference is the money that you're not making. Then the next thing is the time you're not utilizing. We know that every single one of us is going to eventually die, unfortunately. We're all going to die and we don't know when. So if God has called you to do something, the time to do it is now, not in five years. Because you have, an, you have a finite time on this earth. The next thing is the impact that you are not making. So there are some people right now who are stuck because you are not taking action on what God has called you to take action on. Like, I, I'm just having this image of Daniel who was praying and praying and praying and the angel was sent with the answer, but he just got, he caught, got, caught, he got held up, Right. And some of us are, some people are praying and praying for, they're praying for you to come and help them in, in this one particular way. And just because you've decided that mm, God said I should do this, but I really don't think it's a great idea. You don't. And they somehow remain stuck longer than they should. Right? So if you're a great singer, and you know you're supposed to be releasing albums or you're a great storyteller you're supposed to be helping moms you know read books to their kids online for example or a great baker baking cakes 
or whatever you can't even think of what pain is in your heart right now like what would you like what would you feel better if was currently done if you had access to you know this how would you feel so it's also the impact you're now making and the the, la- the fourth point of cost of inaction is that like, you know, Beyonce had that song, and I'm not a big Beyonce fan, but she had that song called Irreplaceable. <laughs> that, like, you're irreplaceable, right? <laughs> and unfortunately, I do believe that you know, God can use anyone. And if he wants to use you to start a bank, to start an encouragement group, to start anything, and you choose not to take action on that, he can use someone else. He can give ideas. You're, the idea he's given to you, he can plant it in someone else's heart who will take action. And just like the parable of the men with um, the, the, the servants, with the talents, the parable of the talents, where one had one talent and he hid it and he buried his talent. And God find, and you know the master finally came back and gave that talent to, to the one with, who had the most right? If God gives us a talent, a skill, and, you know, we have a desire, you know, we're trying to get out of debt. We're trying to make an impact for the kingdom. We're trying to improve our lives, improve the lives of our families and improve the lives of our community. And we have this skill and we choose not to use it. It's like we're burying it in, in, in the ground and God will come back and dig it up and give it to someone else. What you don't lo- use, you will eventually lose. Yeah, so um, that's, you know, the sad part of it. So, but it's also the reality. Um, and that's, I think we've kind of gone over and I apologize for that. So I will end there. And if you have any particular questions, definitely, you know, leave a comment, send me an email at elizabeth at wealthfromlisook.com or (coughs) just leave a comment on um, social media. Thank you all for joining. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you, you can drop a comment in the chat. Let me know what you think, what you thought about what I've just said. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all joining. Really do.